we are now back with a Genshin Impact Hunger Games. But this is Fontaine Edition! Let's go! The unforgettable floods of Fontaine. The gates are opening. Now this is going to be fun. District 1, we have Ether and Paimon. District 2 is Lumine and Tartalia. District 3 is Linny and Lynette. District 4 is Fremenet and Olakino. District 5 is Fosalor and Nouvellet. District 6 is Sigwin and Risley. Or Risley. District 7, Clorinda and Navia. District 8 is Charlotte and a Baguette. District 9 is Yanfei and Hazel. They somehow infiltrated. We had to fill up the slot somehow. District 10 is Datori and Columbina. District 11 is Venti and Jean. Lee. And District 12 is Kaveh and Nahida. And we're going to see this. This is a custom made one again by Bob. Hopefully everything is different and we'll see how this goes. The Fontaine Research Institute wants to find someone strong enough to use their brand new invention so they can stop the Fontaine floods. Of the 24 contestants, one must emerge triumphant. Hazel runs away from the central laboratory. Nouvellet and Risley attempt a mashup of both of their themes and it sounds terrible. That would sound pretty bad. I think Nouvellet's theme slaps and Risley's... Risley's was good but it didn't hit as, as hard as Nouvellet's to me honestly. Lynette runs away from the central laboratory. So does Olakino. So does Lumine. So does Fremide. So does Charlotte. Oh my god. Columbina steps off her podium too soon and blows <laughs> Great start. Rip Columbina. Ether runs away from the central laboratory. Yanfei clutches a first aid kit and runs away. Datore runs away. Child runs away. Baguette takes a handful of throwing knives. Okay. Dog with drip and throwing knives is kind of terrifying. Kaveh runs away. Nahida runs away. Detective Paimon runs away. Navia and Sigwin attempt a mashup of both their themes and it sounds horrible. Well, that's interesting because we don't even know what their themes are yet. Zhongli stabs Linny with a tree branch. Dude, he saw that Fatui symbol and was like, nah, I'm not taking any risks, dude. Venti, Clorinda, and Farina arena work together to get as many supplies as possible. Well, that's interesting. We're not even at day one yet. Day number one of the unforgettable floods of Fontaine. Navia and Lynette work together for the day. Farina picks flowers. Clorinda tries to go outside the Paimon barrier and succeeds and now knows how the game will end. Yo, she hack it. Nahida and Alakino track down and kill Detective Paimon? Nahida's always kind of been insane. She won two, I think. Child constructs a shack. Yanfei discovers a cave. Venti and Charlotte split up to search for resources. Dottore eats and Hazel start fighting, but Ether runs away as Datore kills Hazel. <gasps> well, that's not good. Nouvellet, Sigwin, Kave, and Lumine try out the new domains. They succeeded, but the artifacts are all defense. Oh, dude, Nouvellet, you're just like me for real, brother. You're just like me for real. Fremenet questions his sanity. Zhongli overhears Baguette and Risley talking in the distance. Yo, the two dog boys did. Four blubber beast growls can be heard in the distance. Columbina, Linny, Detective Paimon, and Hazel are all dead already. They're getting picked off quick, dude. Dude. Night number one. Navia attempts to start a fire but is unsuccessful. Risley receives fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Baguette dies from an infection. Oh, you got the throwing knives and everything. And you were talking to Risley. Did Risley infect you? I'm not going to think too deep into that one. Yanfei and Alakino run into each other and decide to truce for the night. Nouvellet tends to his wounds. I could do that for you, King. It's fine. Lynette looks at the night sky. Cute. Fremenet loses sight of where he is. Probably drowning underwater. Kave cries himself to sleep. Cannon, probably. Zhongli tends to Clorinda's wounds. Venti lets Ether into his shelter. Oh, they're getting drunk as shit tonight, dude. They are getting absolutely hammered. They're sleeping through day two. Dottore thinks about home. Sigwin passes out from exhaustion. Nahida, Lumine, and Farina start fighting, but Lumine runs away as Nahida kills Farina. <gasps> Nahida, you are unhinged. Child quietly hums. That's terrifying. That sounds menacing. Charlotte attempts to start a fire, but is unsuccessful. Okay, we're on day number two. Yanfei is trying to engage in combat so she can listen to the banger Fontaine battle OST. Child is very confused. I do the same. Yanfei is kind of base for that. Lynette, Zhongli, and Lu Min run away from the Fountain of Lucine after they hear the voice... Okay, so we're banning Bob from Hunger Games and Ken from quizzes, okay? Maybe next time y'all can swap. Clorinda and Olakino work together for the day. They'd make a good team, probably. Ether chases Risley. So does everybody in the community. Datore, Navia, and Nouvellet run away from the Fountain of Lucine after they hear the voices. Everybody's hearing the voices, dude. Oh, God. Fremini camouflages himself in the bushes. Charlotte and Sigwin split up to search for resources. Baguette and Farina are dead. No full district teams are out yet. None. So that is fine. Anyway, night number two. Kave climbs a tree to rest while Clorinda finds a strange piece of technology called a phone. She opens an app called Twitter and gets addicted to it. Well, that's outdated, Bob. <clears throat> 
I'll have you know it's X now. Zhongli and Nuva let sleep in shifts. Child lets Ether into his shelter. Ether's sleeping around, dude. He's sleeping everywhere. Dottori attends to his wounds. Yanfei receives medical supplies from an unknown sponsor. Lumine cries herself to sleep. Okay. Alakino lets Charlotte into her shelter. I wouldn't trust. Risley receives medical supplies. Venti decapitates Lynette with a sword. The Archons are going sicko mode, dude. Navia stays awake all night. I would too. Damn it. Sigwin's on Twitter as well. Fermini attempts to start a fire but is unsuccessful. And Nahida climbs a tree to rest. Day number three. Venti tries to sleep through the entire day while Carve constructs a shack. Sigwin pushes child off a cliff during a knife fight. Oh no, we've still got his vision too. Yanfei collects fruit from a tree. Risley, Zhongli, and Ether hear the voices again, and so do Nuvalet, Charlotte, and Alakino. Clorinda is pricked by thorns when picking berries, and Fremini receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Navia collects fruit, Dottori is pricked by thorns, Lumine thinks about home, and Nahida questions her sanity. Bro, I think everybody's questioning Nahida sanity right now. She's going insane. Two blubber bees growls can be heard. Lynette and Child are both dead. <laughs> Yo, that image is so funny, dude. Oh my god, that image is so funny. Child's kaput. He's kaput. Oh, District 3 is removed. Liddy and Lynette, they're gone, chat. I want Nuvalet to win. I want District 5 to win. But it's not looking good right now because Fosalo's already dead. Kave quietly hums on night three. Yanfei finds a phone. After opening an app called Twitter, Yanfei throws the phone in the ocean. Yep, that's based. That's good. Nuvalet quietly hums. Venti tends to not hit his wounds. Dude, the Archons are ganging up. Zhongli sets up camp for the night. Charlotte, Navia, and Lumine cheerfully sing songs together. Cute. Fremade stays awake all night. Alakino stays awake all night. Sigwin, Clorinda, and Ether discuss the games and what might happen in the morning. Dottori lost sight of where he is, and Risley cries himself to sleep. That doesn't sound very Risley. All right, day number four. This is where things usually get interesting. Lumine receives fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Sigwin begs for Fremade to kill her. He refuses, keeping Sigwin alive. Sigwin feels bad for pushing Tartalia off the cliff. Zhongli gets medical supplies, and Kave decapitates the Tore with a sword. Auto Apocalypse coming in strong, dude. Navia sings his own theme. Charlotte taints Risley's food, killing him. Damn, that's toxic. Nahida attacks Alakino, but she manages to escape. She might have finally met her match. Vent is pricked by thorns when picking berries, and Nuvalet travels to higher ground. Based. Clorinda steals from Yanfei while she isn't looking, and Ether's pricked by thorns. Dottori and Risley are both dead, which means District 3 is fully out, and District 10 is fully out. I think District 5 has a good chance, because I love Nuvalet, and he's strong and smart and handsome. Night number four. Fremenet cuts his food before putting his fire out, and Ether attempts to start a fire, but is unsuccessful. Zhongli sets up a camp for the night while Clorinda tends to her wounds, and Yanfei is thinking about home. Venti and Nuvalet tell stories about themselves to each other. That'd be an interesting thing to see, like, actually in the game, dude. Nahida begs for Navia to kill her. She refuses keeping Nahida alive. Charlotte tries to sing herself to sleep, and Sigwin thinks about home. Kave passes out from exhaustion, and Lumine and Alakino tell stories about themselves to one another. Day number five. Zhongli sees smoke rising in the distance, but decides not to investigate. Nuvalet constructs a shack. Kave chases Nahida. You're part of the same team. Don't let, don't let the gang down like this. Ether sings his own theme. Lol, Rip Bozo, you don't got one. Charlotte Kava flashes herself in the bushes, and Yanfei attacks Clorinda, but she manages to escape. Sigwin injures herself. Navia, Alakino, Lumine, and Fremenet track down and kill Venti. Oh my god. Now it's just Zhongli alive in District 11. Night number five. Nuvalet is unable to convince Zhongli to not kill him. What in the fuck does that mean? Hold on, that's like double negatives, I feel like. Nuvalet is unable to convince Zhongli to not kill- Does that mean fucking Zhongli killed Nuvalet? You uh, fucking Samantha's bitch! Wife. Fremini convinces Clorinda to not kill him, only to kill her instead. <laughs> huh? Oh my god, Fremini, you legend. That's insane. Lumine, Sigwin, and Alakino and Charlotte sleep in shifts. Kave and Ether huddle for warmth. <laughs> oh ho ho ho, Travanel. Navi and Nahida and Yanfei cheerfully sing songs together. Day number six. This is we've gotta get the midway through insane thing that happens, right? We usually get that. Navia thinks about home. Charlotte overhears Kave and Yanfei talking in the distance. Sigwin thinks about home. Lumine, Ether, Fremini, and Nahida try out the new domains. They succeed and get great artifacts. Zhongli is petting a melazine. Stop trying to steal Nuvalet's thing. You will never be like a father to them. Never. Go write up a fucking contract. Alakino sings his own theme. Father. Nuvalet and Clorinde are dead. God damn it. District 5 is now removed from the equation and District 7 has one less person. Night number 6. Charlotte tends to Nahida's wounds. Navia's trap kills Zhongli. 
Oh, I love some Geo on Geo action, dude. Let's go. Good shit, Navia. Yanfei fishes at night. She successfully catches a maintenance mech platinum collection, but it's completely useless. Ether cooks his food. Lumine finds a strange piece of technology called a phone and gets addicted to Twitter. Kaveh hums quietly and Sigwin can't start a fire. Fremini does set up camp for the night and Alakino just goes to bed. Day number seven. Where's the crazy midway event? Navia, Sigwin, and Ether run away from the voices. Nahida and Lumine attempt a mashup of their themes and it sounded terrible. Alakino and Kaveh attempt to mash up and it sounds terrible. Charlotte injures herself and Fremine steals from Yanfei while she isn't locking. Zhongli's dead. Good. Rip Bozo, dude. Dude. District 11 is eliminated, chat. Night number seven. Yanfei and Charlotte tell stories about themselves to each other, while Lumine and Fremine run into each other and decide to truce for the night. Olikino finds a strange piece of technology and gets addicted to Twitter. Nahida and Ether sleep in shifts while Kave looks at the night sky. Navia tries to treat her infection, and Sigwin is now not addicted to Twitter anymore. She has now thrown the fucking phone into the water. Into the ocean, actually based. Okay, we're getting down to only a few people left now. Day number eight. Fremini sprains his ankle while running away from Alakino. Kave, Navia, Yanfei, and Lumine get great artifacts, and Ether gets fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Sigwin takes the high ground. Nahida pets a Melazine. That's cute. Charlotte collects fruit from a tree. Night number eight. Yanfei treats Fremini, Nahida, and Lumine. Oh, fends them away from her fire. And Alakino lets Navia into her shelter. Charlotte cries herself to sleep, and Sigwin gets an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Ether cooks his food before putting his fire out. Kaveh thinks about home. Day number nine. Nahida picks flowers. Lumine sees smoke rising in the distance, but decides not to investigate. Fremine camouflages himself in the bushes. Alakino, Sigwin, Ether, and Yanfei all get defense artifacts. And Kaveh overhears Navia and Charlotte talking in the distance. The floods are getting stronger. Here it is. The first and probably only arena event. The flood is rising. The prophecy is coming true, chat. Ether gets Gets on a high platform and survives, and so does Lumine. Kaveh also does the same. Nahida tried to get on a high platform, but they run out of stamina and die of fall damage. No! She was going to be kind of sick on mode of murdering people, though, so kind of deserved. Alakino gets on the high platform and survives. Yanfei just drowns. Clearly knows the law, but doesn't know how to swim. Fremine dr I mean, that's like, he does know how to swim, but in all the teasers, it looks like he's fucking drowning anyway, so makes sense. Sigwin gets on a high platform and survives. Navia survives. Charlotte tried to get on a high platform, but also die of fall damage. Wow. Nahida, Yanfei, Fremine, and Charlotte all dead. The only districts remaining is District 1, District 2, District 4, District 6, District 7, and District 12. There's not many at all now. If Kaveh dies, the economy's gonna die too. Uh oh. Well, surely Kaveh will survive forever then. Okay, these guys sleep in shifts and Lumine and Sigwin huddle for warmth. Cute and nobody dies. Oh no, there's more. The central laboratory is replenished with food, supplies, weapons, and memoirs from the people's families. Sigwin catches Navia off guard and kills her. <gasps> Ether severely injures Kaveh and leaves him to die. Oh, God. Oh, no. The points economy is in shambles. Kaveh's dead. Alakino decides not to go to the feast, and so does Lumine. Sigwin traps and kills Alakino. Wait, Sigwin's popping off. Navia, Kaveh, and Alakino all dead. Wait, who's left? Ether and Lumine are both left, and so is Sigwin, and that's it, dude. It's the two travelers versus Sigwin. It is always the small ones, actually. You're right. I think Sigwin's gonna win this. It's always the little characters, dude. Lumine silently snaps Sigwin's neck. Ether falls into a frozen lake and drowns. Lumine wins because Ether can't swim. I don't know how to feel about this. Well done, Lumine. You are now the winner of the unforgettable Floods of Fontaine. Wait, what district won? What district was that? Two. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. These guys are going to become so fucking rich, dude. Oh my god. Kitsune just got 1.25 million channel points. That's fucking insane. You're rich. Yeah, you don't fucking say. I think you've got the most channel points out of like anybody in the entire chat. That was unironically pretty fucking impressive, dude. Lumine won. And uh, here were the placements. Lumine only had two kills. Who had the most kills? It was Sigwin with three kills, dude. I can't believe fucking Ether just fell into a frozen lake and died. That's such a boring way to, to go. Dude, I love the Hunger Games stuff. It's very fun. That's going to be a fun one.